Hey guys, Leo here from Digital Odyssey. Welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video, I thought I'd give you guys a quick overview on how to work with the PC PDF library for PHP. Um, it's pretty simple, it's pretty easy to work with, so this is gonna be a pretty quick video. Um, so just to get started here, I'm just gonna give you guys a quick demonstration of how um, this is going to look or kind of what I'm gonna be showing you guys. Um, so this here, this is a custom order form. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you're probably familiar with it. Um, this is just a, a custom checkout form that I created for a client uh, last year. Um, so basically what you're doing here is you're just selecting a t-shirt design, you're entering your customer information. Um, customers also have the option to add a logo or an image on the back side of their t-shirt. Um, and then they can enter their t-shirt collections here. Uh, so let's get that in there, right? And then they can hit place order shows their order details and then from here they can hit get shipping rates and then they can confirm the order so once the order uh, gets processed it actually gets saved on the back end in WordPress so this is just a custom uh, page here that I created in, uh, in the back end of WordPress where so all of these orders are being saved into a MySQL database into a custom table and then in WordPress, I'm just uh, calling a query, which retrieves all of the order data and then displays them here in a table format. Um, so you'll notice here under invoice generated under this column, um, you'll see here that uh, an invoice was generated for the order that we just submitted. So if I click here on the invoice number, you'll see here that this is the PDF that was generated uh, upon the order completion. Right, so here's all the information that I entered. There's the date, there's the uh, t-shirt collections that I configured for the order or that I selected. Uh, printing fee, subtotal, shipping and handling, HST, and then the total amount due. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, that's uh, pretty much what I'm gonna be showing you guys. So I'm just gonna show you guys the code base on how this was created. Uh, but before I do that, I'm just gonna show you guys, let me just cancel out of this. Okay, uh, before I do that, I'm just going to show you guys um, where you can go to grab the TCPDF library. So if you go to tcpdf.org, you can download the library from here. Um, they have examples that you can also go through to see um, different configurations or kind of like different, um, yeah, kind of like different layouts that you can create with this, uh, with this library. Um, you can see here you can create PDFs with form fields, which is pretty cool. Um, you can also write HTML tables. So write HTML, it has a write HTML function that you can use to write HTML, um, to stylize your information with HTML code. You can also um, draw HTML tables and fill it with content. Um, so there's a lot of cool things you can do with this plugin. Um, if you want to add it to your project, um, there's a GitHub link here so you can click on that it'll redirect you to the github page so for this one here this is actually the first iteration of the library uh, I believe the author is working on a new version yeah right so right here a new version of this library is under development um, so this library currently is only under support mode uh, the new library that he's working on is still under development so I wouldn't recommend downloading it or using it um, until he makes an official announcement that it's ready to be used for production. Uh, so for the time being, um, just use the original one. I think the latest version is 6.22, which is the one that I'm using. Um, there's no, I don't see any links here or any instructions here on how to install this with Composer. I know the new library does have a Composer um, code that you can use to install the library through Composer, but the original TCPDF library, I don't see one here. Um, so you can just go ahead and just download the zip file right from here and then just add it to your project and you should be good to go. Uh, well, not quite yet, but um, yeah, so that's pretty much where you grab the library from. So now I'm just going to jump into VS Code and kind of walk you guys through a little bit of the library and how to actually structure the code so you guys can actually create your own PDF files. All right, so here we are in VS Code. Um, before I actually start jumping into the code here, let me just quickly show you guys how I installed 
of the library. So this is actually a WordPress theme that I'm working within. Um, so here I have a vendor folder in my WordPress theme. This is where I just keep all of my PHP libraries. Um, so here's the TCPDF folder. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, just you can just download the TCPDF library from the GitHub page, just download the zip file and then just add it to your project. So in my case, I added it under this vendors folder. And then this tcpdf.php file, that's the file that I'm importing into uh, WordPress. So in my functions file, functions, um, at the very end here of my functions file, I'm just importing uh, that tcpdf.php file. So that's essentially importing uh, the entire library um, into WordPress. Um, and then one thing I should mention here is that, that uh, the tcpdf PHP file actually uh, you can actually reference this particular file if you need to get some information on parameters or if you're not familiar with how a certain function works you can reference this file here um, the author provides plenty of detail and um, we'll jump back into this file in a moment um, also if you go under the examples folder so all of the examples that uh, I was so some of the examples that I was showing you on the website those, those examples are all included within the library. So you can actually reference those examples right here. So all the code is right here for you to reference and kind of play around with, right? So all those examples are here, which is great. Um, okay. Uh, all right, so basically for my project, um, since it's all being uh, driven by JavaScript, um, when, a, when a customer uh, presses the confirm order button on the final step. It's basically I'm basically making an Ajax call from JavaScript to PHP or to WordPress um, And this is the uh, function that I'm calling in order to uh, well, yeah, this is the function that I'm calling um, to generate uh, an order invoice um, And then within here I have all of my code here, which is uh, communicating with the PDF library So let me just kind of run this by you right from the top here uh, so this is basically running in a try catch block um, and then basically what I'm doing is I'm instantiating a new TCPDF object um, These are the parameters that or these are like default parameters that you can enter in order to configure this correctly um, So P is PDF page orientation MM is PDF unit AF is the PDF page format um, And then there's some other parameters here that you can enter um, don't know what this true or false means. Uh, I don't remember it's top of my head. Uh, but if you guys want, you guys can um, you guys can reference this TCPDF file like I mentioned earlier. Um, I just took these uh, from the uh, from the documentation from the website. Um, so that's how you pretty much instantiate the TCPDF object. And then once you do that, you can uh, you can interface with these methods here that are that are all built into the PDF class or to the TCPDF class. So essentially, here you can set some initial document uh, information. So I'm setting the author name, I'm setting the title, um, the default uh, font is also there. I'm not sure if you need to find this one here. You might not have to, but I did it anyways um, in case I want to maybe. Uh, set my own default font like if I wanted to make that Poppins I could probably change that out there uh, you can set the initial margins of your document so for my margins I just set them all to 15 um, you can also actually you can set a custom font here as well so there is a set font method that you can work with so if you want you can leave this one to courier as a backup and then you can set your own custom font to Poppins if you wanted to or maybe Montserrat Right, so you can enter that here, and then there's two additional parameters here, which I don't recall off the top of my head what these do in particular, but let's see if we can quickly find that in the TCPDF file. Set font, so we have the add font function, or set font. Your set font, here we go. Uh, so public function set font, that is the correct one, right? I believe that should be it. Although I'm not sure why that's the more case, but um, so we have the family, and then we have the style, and then we have the size. So I'm setting the size there to 11, the style I'm just leaving blank. Okay, and then after that, we do add page. So we call the add page method. And in my case here, 
uh, my client wanted a custom template or like a custom um, invoice template added to the PDF file. So he just provided me with this invoice template graphic, um, which is actually here. Uh, let's see if it shows up here, it should load. Okay, that seems to be taking a little while. But anyways, this is a, an invoice template graphic that was provided to me by my client. Um, so that's essentially the invoice template that you saw earlier. Uh, and then we're assigning that image template file. We're setting its uh, kind of its position and this, I think this is the width and the height of the image that we're configuring. And then this is kind of, I think this is the X and Y position. Uh, so this is essentially being uh, overlaid onto the PDF file and then I'm just adding text on top of that. So you'll see here I have right data cells. Uh, so PDF set XY. So this is uh, it's a little bit weird how this works, but essentially what you do is you have to set your XY coordinates first and then you set up your actual cell, which is where you enter your data. Um, so the first two parameters are the width and the height and the last two parameters are the border and the line. Uh, I'm not sure what the line is for. I think it I think it has to do something with the positioning. Um, but if you want to find more information on that, you can actually reference the information for that in the TCPDF file. Oh, there it is. Okay, so here's the invoice template that I'm working with. So this was provided to me by my client. So basically I'm loading this graphic into the PDF file and then I'm just overlaying the text on top of the image. So that's one way you can do this. You can also, if you wanted to, you could actually structure this entirely with uh, HTML code using an HTML table. So that's entirely possible as well. Uh, but in this case here, my client was uh, kind of on a tight budget and he just provided me with the graphic template or the invoice and then I just overlaid the information on top of that. Um, so here's a whole bunch of additional information that I'm uh, essentially adding to the PDF. Um, I'm adding an address. This field, I actually don't remember what I'm adding here. So I'm just going to ignore that one for now. And then I'm adding the dates. I'm adding the details for the adult shirts and the order details are going just beneath that. Then I'm entering the printing fee, the subtotal, the shipping, the taxes, and then the total amount due. Um, so again, this is all strictly just for demonstration purposes, just to show you guys data that I'm entering into the PDF file. Um, so once you do all of that initial configuration, then you can actually output that file to your server. Uh, so here I'm just structuring some code. So I'm just getting the WordPress upload directory. Um, and then I'm using that to get the base directory and then um, accessing my invoices folder, which I created on my server. And then I'm just creating an output file name, right? And then I'm just generating the, um, the invoice file name here. And then finally, I'm just calling, I'm just creating an output variable, calling PDF output, and then actually outputting this to the server, right? Uh, so here, this is the actual, um, like the actual URL with the file name, which is required to get this to save correctly. And then here, the second parameter F e, um, is saved to local server, uh, saved to, to a local server file. Um, there are some additional options here that you can play with. Um, again, you can get that information from the tcpdf.php file. Um, so once that's done, I'm just checking to see if the output was successful. If it wasn't, I'm throwing a new exception. So I'm just throwing a new error. Uh, and if it was successful, then I'm just configuring some additional information here that I'm sending back to JavaScript. Um, so this is entirely optional. You don't necessarily have to do this, but this is just data that I'm sending back to JavaScript. Um, all right, so this is this is pretty much optional. From here, you can pretty much um, manage this code. You can pretty much do whatever you want from this point here. This is pretty much your kind of like success code block here that you can use to um, send data back to JavaScript or maybe do a redirect or just send back some kind of success message saying that the file was successfully created. Um, and then this is just the second part of the try catch block. I'm just catching all of my errors here and sending this back to JavaScript. Um, and that's pretty much all it is really. Um, it's pretty easy to work with. Uh, it's a pretty easy library to work with. Um, 
And yeah, so that's pretty much it. So I am going to be posting this code on my website in the next few days. So if you guys need a point of reference, you guys can grab that from, uh, you guys will be able to grab this code from my website. And uh, I'll also have the uh, link there to the, the official TCPDF library. Um, and that's it. So guys, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you guys have any questions or uh, need any help, feel free to post them down in the comments below. You can also reach me through my website at digitalodyssey.ca. And again, thanks so much for watching. If you guys liked the video, if you guys found it helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And uh, I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.